Good morning, and welcome to The Review, the Instagram Live podcast where Kendama news and culture is shared over the warmth of coffee. Today we are joined by Teo, Teo from the Netherlands to talk about his journey going pro with GT. He's one of GT's newest pros in 2020, and we're going to be talking all about that story, all about that journey, and we're going to be talking about the most recent event in his life, or a big recent event in his life, performing on France's version of Got Talent. So join us as we dive into this week's review, and I hope your cup is full. And as always, I want to know from those of you tuning in down in the chat, what are you drinking this morning? I myself, as always, I I haven't changed it up in a long time. I really should. I am drinking again a cup of AeroPress coffee from a, a roaster. The cup is made with some beans from a roaster here in the city called Rosso or Rosso. There's like a pretentious group of people that call it Rosso, and I think I'm one of them. Anyways, all that said, we're going to be diving into today's review in just a couple minutes. If you're wondering why it's at a different time, it is because Tio is on a totally different schedule than I am. He is from the Netherlands. He's living in Europe right now, and they are on a totally different timeline. So he's going to be joining us from the evening where he is. As we get ready, I do want to make sure that you guys are up to date on everything else that is going on in the world of Cafe Kendama, the review, and those sorts of things. But before I do, let me know what you're drinking, as well as toss a couple questions down in the Q&A tool at the bottom for today's episode. T and I have set aside some time to answer your questions live. So open up that Q&A tool, drop a question in there. But as always, the best way to get your questions in is by putting them on the post ahead of time. We got a lot of questions this week, and I'm very, very excited to get the answers to them. Um, One thing I do want to make note of, uh, first off, is if you're wondering how to brew coffee from an AeroPress the way that I brew it, if you're curious, I get that question often. I actually wrote a blog about that. You can head over to cafekendama.com slash blog and get the details there on how I make my AeroPress every week. So you can check out that blog. You can also read three blogs written by a guest in the community, Chad Covington, Brett Walters, and I'm going to forget the last one, uh, Max Angel. Max Angel from here in Canada. So you can read those stories as well. And we are looking for more submissions. I have a couple drafts in the work right now with some people in the community. So uh, if you do submit, it may take a little bit for me to get around to it. So please be patient uh, with me as we try to create good content for the Kanama community. Uh, Last thing I do want to say is this. Let's dive into this week's review. I thought I had another thing I was going to say, but I don't. So let's get Tio on here. Let's start up a little early here because I'm sure you guys have tons of questions, as do I. So let's give Tio a welcome as he joins the review this morning. Yo. Tio, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm just trying to set this up right because... Yeah, absolutely. Take earphones in. And I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> yeah, I'm good now. Dude, so what's up? I am doing fantastic. I got my cup of coffee here this morning. And as always, in every review, I like to open with the question, what are you drinking this morning? Or for you, it's I'm, the evening. Yeah, exactly. So I started off my evening with some tea and hung out. And now I'm drinking a beer. <laughs> tea. Yeah. He brings tea onto the show. and beer. Yeah, you know I do, what? actually. Yeah. Let, I, I may be your most hated uh, <laughs> like guest on this show so far you know maybe. you know what i don't know if that's true we had uh carter justice roll up with i think a lipton iced tea once uh on his oh, episode damn. so yeah so, so you're doing better than him right now <laughs> okay yeah it, and i i have a brew dog for you so oh a brew it's dog got brew yeah it's got brew in the name is that ipa what what, are, what, what yeah kind of it, is that? yeah it's an ipa yeah this is a the like the american in me you know i'm in i'm in europe but i found like american beer and Hey, so I'm, I'm happy, enough. you know, we'll get into some of that story. I do definitely want to get into some of your journey uh, where you've lived because mm-hmm. you've been all over the world and I definitely want to get yeah. on that a bit. But before we do, I got two other icebreaker questions I want to get through that I ask every guest. The second question uh-huh. being, uh, what is your all time favorite trick? A uh, trick that either a inspires oh you or just like a, a basic trick that you just love? Like um, a specific trick that's been landed or a specific like classic it, trick or yeah, just anything. However you want to interpret it. Everybody interprets um, it a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to say just as a general trick, a tap. Ooh. Just, yeah, cause the, just a tap like in any direction. Like, because uh, I feel like that's been one of the biggest like 
uh, just factors in people's tricks recently. Like if you look at Groves at it, it's all taps. Like if you look yeah. at like uh, so many tricks recently, like there's taps some way or the other. Like it's one of the most polarizing tricks recently. So I would, <laughs> I would probably say just generally a tap. Yeah, and you just hit a crazy tap banger on your on your grid that got reposted on the Green Theory page. The one where you were like uh, doing kind of like, I, I don't know what you would call them, but like kind of like Wong taps in your juggles. Absolutely. And then you... yeah, yeah, you can call them Wong taps. Uh, that's like the broad term for the trick that Calvin named it. I have like this technical term. The minute I saw that trick landed, I was like, holy crap, that dude did a cushion shove it. Because like the shove oh, it motion yeah, yeah, yeah. is a flat spin on a Kanama. Yeah. And it, it like just rotates on that plane and he yeah. pushed it and then it shoves. And so like I brought skateboarding back into that and I was like, wow, <laughs> that's just incredible. So it's called Wong tap, you know, it's or, like, or kush shove it, whatever way. You yeah, want to kush call shove it. it's more like the more like technical underground term that like, you know, it shows like the whole scope of the trick. It's very informative, that yeah. term. But like Wong tap is just like we all love Kelvin. So yeah, you can't what, what's not to love about Kelvin. I was actually absolutely this morning, dude. Yeah, I was jamming the, to have you have you listened the to the the soul kandamas lo-fi uh no i have YouTube? not there's if, a if you haven't okay that's sick. yeah if you haven't listened to it go on to youtube search up soul kandamas lo-fi i think it and, and it should come up as the number one search and kelvin wong and shelton from soul kandamas mm -hmm. they had put together this playlist it's like 30 minutes long it is one of my favorite morning playlists to listen to okay that's so good sick. yeah i'm so down I'll, I'll definitely check that out Okay, third question before we dive into the meat of our mm -hmm. conversation this morning. Uh, who is the most influential player in Kendama for you? Wow. Uh, that's, yeah, that's so hard. Like, just as one, like, uh, influencing me or the game or... Uh, you can interpret it either way. Typically, mm -hmm. I would ask for you, who, who has influenced you the most? And it doesn't even have to be for playstyle. It could be based on character or what uh, they've done for you. Yeah, I mean, if... Oh, I could talk about this forever, but uh, we can we can go as um, like if if I if I roll it back in time to like my first event, uh, I had a, a really good friend that I I became friends with at that event. His name is Maiko. He's like this UK player, and he he really introduced me to this world as a subculture. I'd I'd been playing for a year, and like I mm -hmm. knew it as a as a game as a sport, but I hadn't mm -hmm. dwelled into like content and like tricks and yeah. edits. So he he was one of one of the biggest catalyzers for my like start into the Kanama world. So he, he, for me personally, he's influenced me the most as a player, like individually, I think like sweets is a, like, okay. Such an influential player. Yeah. Like, and shout as a whole in the game. Yeah. Just for all the work he's done, shout out Matt and like same for other yeah. brand owners, like Weens and Chad, yeah. like those guys and we, all the we underground not, dudes. Yeah. We wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't exactly for some so. of those guys taking the risk to put money, money where their mouth yeah. was and say like, I love this game enough to try and grow it. Yeah. So it's not essentially just a pro it's for me, like it's, it's gotta be one of the brand owners. If you talk about it, like on that scope as a subculture, who's growing yeah. it, who's like oh, yeah. Reed, for example, as well, I could, I yeah. could go forever, but yeah, those do. Oh, we can, we can riff on it in a bit too. Yeah. Cause I think that you have a really cool perspective on growth that a lot of my audience here on the review hasn't experienced because we really haven't interviewed a lot mm -hmm. of people internationally aside from Lisa in, in New Zealand. And I yeah. think so many of us and myself in particular, like I haven't traveled. I really haven't really been to mm -hmm. any events aside from NACO MKO that I yeah. have such a limited experience of like what Kendama looks like in the world. So we can dive into that a little bit later, but I want to get to know yeah, your absolutely. story here uh, in, in a hot second. But before I do, I do want to remind those of you tuning in, those of you guys just joining into the preview this morning, we have some sessions throughout this live conversation where you can ask some questions to Tio. Drop those down in the Q&A tool. That's that little question box at the bottom with the question mark. And we'll make sure we answer as many as we can when we get to those sections. If you want priority questions, make sure you put them on the post ahead of time. Mm -hmm. All that said, mm -hmm. Tio, are you ready to dive into the review? For sure, yeah. Let's go. Dude. Okay, so Tio, first off, let me preface. Uh, those of you tuning in, Tio and I actually met digitally, like what, three years ago? Three and a half oh years God. ago, we played a yeah, game with Ken. I, it came to mind recently, so I was like trying to pinpoint it. I'm thinking it was like maybe end of 2017, like maybe like December. Yeah, something like it was that. a it was so a long three time years ago. ago, almost on the dot, probably like yeah, right around there. And you you completely wrecked me, and I'm like looking back at that, I'm like, wow, this guy who is now <clears throat> sorry, man, got something in my throat there. 
Uh, this guy wrecked me in this game of Ken and, and he is going places. You have grown in your skill immensely throughout that season. And you are now very well renowned as a tech wizard in the community. Someone who has expanded the play of Kendama through unique additions to tap flow, mm -hmm. juggle flow, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've done some really cool innovation in that space, but I want to take it back a little bit in time and then catch us up to there. What was your very mm -hmm. first point of contact with Kendama? Yeah, first of all, thanks. I really appreciate it. And you also grew like so much. And <laughs> that's so sick. Uh, first, first contact point of Kendama for me. So I was in my last year of high school. Uh, homie uh, came back actually from Amsterdam, like close to where I'm living now. And uh, he brought back a Kendama and just like started like messing around with it. So for a few months, and then I like saw him playing uh, and just asked him, I was like, what is that? Can I try? And uh, yeah, so for for a few minutes I played and I was hooked. And I was like, the homies and I decided to order off Konami USA. We each ordered uh, one of the, I think, t I want to say 2014 Pro Mods. This was in 2015. This was like maybe oct like October 2015. And so my first Konami was a Zach Yord Pro Mod. Oh, shout out to Zach, Zach Yord. Yord. Absolutely, man. Big shout out to Yord. Like, yeah, he's doing some cool stuff right now. Did you see that book absolutely. he just published? Yeah, yeah, I did. It's so Pe sick. Peaking with pastries. If you guys don't yeah. know Zach Yord, go check out his profile. He just launched a book about like traveling and hiking up mountains, and he like takes photos at the top of mountains with pastries. So it's called it's Peaking so with sick. Pastries. It's, it's yeah, dope. it's yeah. He, he and I have so much in common. He like comes from Pittsburgh. He grew up in the same neighborhood where my like family lives. Like, it's so crazy. Yeah. So, so, okay, so you, 2015, cool. 2015, you picked up your first yeah. Kendama, Zach Yord. Where were you at this time? Because you've been all over I was the world. in uh, Toulouse, France. I was in southern okay. France. I was okay. doing my last year of school. I did all of my, like, middle school and high school in the same school. And I ended up, my last year, I, I definitely dedicated more time doing Kendama than like maybe homework or something you know i was playing so much i only played kendama at school i never really played at home or anything i played at school for like however many months like seven or eight months and you know like just it was it was casual it was a hobby like i wasn't looking at it any time that i wasn't at school like i wasn't looking online i wasn't playing at home on weekends whatever it was just when mm -hmm. i was at school and i had some downtime yeah so that that was my first year of kendama pretty much um, okay then at 18, I turned 18, I moved out. I came to the Netherlands. I, uh, you know, I was starting my studies. I randomly walked into this store in Amsterdam where my homie actually bought his first Kanama. And that store was the base for Sunrise Kanamas. Oh, no way. Yeah. So I met That's the so owner cool. of Sunrise, David. Shout out, David. And I asked him, like, dude, do you know of any like meetups or events and he said yeah actually in in about two weeks i think it was october 9th uh there's spike dama 9 mm -hmm. in rotterdam and so i i said all right sick then i'll, I'll go and then i went and uh, i met a bunch of dudes i met timote thomas louis from the kanama france team yeah. i met uh yoris who was on kanama usa back yeah, then i yeah. met like just so many friends that now like I have so many memories with. And so from then yeah. on, I was like, Oh wait, this is big. Like Kendama is actually much bigger than what I like thought it was. So for a year I played without any like external influence on my game. Like yeah. I didn't know juggles existed. I didn't know. So, yeah. What anything. did that look like for you? Like what were some of the insane. first tricks that like, you were learning? Uh, I was doing a lot of consistency. I was doing like, I would do around Europe like maybe a hundred times in a row, you know, a very yeah. weird. Like if you look at my first Kendama, maybe I'll bring it out. You can see it was broken and different than any other Kendama okay. like, I've ever seen because it was just cups, cups. Like I was trying, I did some lighthouses, lighthouse flips. I did whirlwind, yeah. but I was doing all these tricks, but just like immeasurable amounts of time. I wasn't yeah. like exploring doing one trick once. It was more like, I'm going to do was... this trick like hundreds of times. It yeah. And so, so you had started playing with some of your high school friends, but then after you yeah. finished high school, did you still have a community that you were playing with in that gap time? Or did you just play by yourself? Yeah, I played by myself. Like, really, Crazy. I played so much Kanama alone because it was just something that felt natural. And I, I, I didn't need the, um, 
you know, the, the communal aspect at that point, I was like, mm -hmm. I didn't know it existed. So I was more just ingrained in like playing for myself, but that also mm -hmm. promoted maybe some really good, um, like attributes, like maybe it mm -hmm. really, I think it really helped me like just, um, fall in love with Kanama at its brutus form. And so yeah. I, I think that was like one of the main denominators in like my obsession with it was like being alone with Kanama and learning alone yeah. with Kanama. And then I didn't have any exterior bias. I wasn't like, oh, I need to impress this person. No, I need to do this for this. It was yeah. just like, I'm just going to play and explore like yeah. my relationship to the toy instead of like my relationship to the, mm -hmm. to the community. And that was sick. And then, but once that communal aspect came, like, dude, I was, I was gone. <laughs> like, and, and that's the way it works, right? It's like you start yeah. meeting people and you're like, whoa, you play differently than yeah. I play the same toy that we both play. And then you're Absolutely. like, oh man, I got to learn. Yeah, That's there was so cool. no way I wasn't going to be invested in it. Like there was no way. Like the minute like I, I, I was done with that event, like I quit studying. I went back home. I like refocused like all of my like uh, just ideas of mm -hmm. what it is to grind, like just to, 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 to yeah. be like part of, of the society and, and like have your interest and then i just got good at kanama and and learned how, the ins and the outs of mm -hmm. the the european community not associated to any brand or anything for a little while then i had like a connection to a french brand for a little bit but that taught me like w how it is to like um get it into like a contract with a company mm -hmm. and then i was like oh maybe this isn't for me right now and so then i i i I left that company and just grinded for myself again and mm, created mm -hmm. my brand. And that's when I met you. Like a few okay. months yeah. after that, like about a year after that, I met you. I'd come back to the Netherlands to study something else. Yeah. And I, like I, uh, I was hosting some live Ken games, I think, or something. Yeah, I, I, I think you had either, either, I'm tr I was trying to remember that, how we ended up meeting. I think, I think it you... is. I think I, I put something on my story. I was like, yeah. I used to play Ken. And, and I was like, yeah, put me in. Answered, and I was like, sick. And then I talked to you and we had this really chill game and like nice conversation. And my, I remember in my old place and it was, it was super fun. And then like, I remember just leaving it and being like, all right, this is sick. And then I played other people. And, <laughs> and you're like, that guy's in the past now, beat him. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's, let's keep, let's keep this going. Let's, uh, let's see what, where this platform can take me. It was, yeah. that was the super sick part. Like, okay so so you had played for a team for a little bit then you went solo mm -hmm. and then and then you started to resurge again like you you had pro kind of just started like peaking and, and getting more attraction and then eventually you ended up on grain theory and we'll talk a little bit more about that story but what was yeah. that gap period like for you where you were just playing for yourself it was did great. you go to events it was so good yeah i went to so many events man like i what, what were some of them my that money oh my gosh like if i can talk like in europe <laughs> it's not the same as anywhere else the, the the sheer amount of events is unparalleled so i went to like all right i'm gonna give you like quick fire a few of these yeah, yeah. i went to uh autumn battle in prague fortress launch um oh i forgot about that company yo yeah i was, when that I was company there launched, that was so cool they did oh man i i it was so that sick brand. like their whole marketing scheme everything yeah. was really good from what that man. brand did and and the kanamas were sick the people were sick the spot was sick like everything like i i went there got i think second in their open division and like hung out with like all the homies they had a big house by the way yeah. if it looks like i'm fighting something right here it is because i have kitten, <laughs> and she is like about this like cord <laughs> on the headphones it, it can't be as bad as why Bray's cat who just like pounds off his camera every time he's yeah online. oh my gosh yeah okay she's not there yet but yeah so i was playing like so much hung out so many events i went to damarama like uh yeah. kanama event in france called battle at the castle like on two other spike damas like you kanama yeah. events in europe it's not the same thing like you i went to free kanama events in three weeks around the period wow. i i met you online you know like, that's crazy it was so crazy I, I must have gone to at least overall like we were counting with tim maybe 45 kanama events yeah so what, what, in, in the past three years or something that's that's wild so what what that's so different than here so are those events big events or are they pretty small events that just are a ton of them or do lots of people come exactly out yeah no no it's a smaller event and it's like this, this core group of guys 
who like travel to each one. It's so sick. So like Man. the friends I've made through Kendama, like I've seen them so much. Like yeah. that's what's so sick. Um, and yeah, like I mean, they're they're. I'd I'd say we used to average back then around like thirty or forty, but now we average a hundred. Yeah, wow. Like close to a wow. hundred on some events. Like this year, not so much, but like maybe Domorama Five, which was like the first weekend of January, maybe a hundred twenty, a hundred thirty people. My event yeah. in um, in Leiden MKS uh, throughout the day it was like one hundred eighty people. So it's like wow, all these events do have like a lot of people coming and it's sick but but a lot of times it's that core group and back in the day it was like we used to travel uh just the core group and and that was sick so shout that, out to all those guys like, man that that's so, so insane sick. compared to so yeah. i i live in canada i'm in calgary mm -hmm. alberta and the next like nearest biggish city like a, a large city is like three hours away and so every like big group of kanama players is like at least three hours or more away so it's like wow. we don't get that opportunity to just travel and go to different events because the next major hub is so far away that it's not like a, a hop skip and a yeah, jump to get crazy. to the next one but in yeah. europe everything is a lot tighter together than canada so like is that do you think that that plays into how how you're able to do so many events I can't hear you right now. You're cut. I don't know if your audio cut out. How about now? There we go. We're good. All right. Yeah, the cat is messing with my stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just going to hold this for now. Um, but yeah, like, I think it plays such a huge part because logistically, like, just moving around here is easier. Like, like, the connections are just so much better. Like, there's trains, mm -hmm. buses, everything. And then just culturally, like, you can be in the Netherlands and in a 500 kilometer radius, there's like 10 different communities from different countries speaking different mm -hmm. languages. So it's like, but we all speak Kendama. So like if, if you travel wow. out there, you're, 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 you're like with people from a completely different culture, eating different food, but you're still so close to home. So that's yeah. like Europe is, is such a good spot for Kendama because of that, like just the ease of getting around and then the diversity within like such a small space. So yeah, like I, I think we're very lucky out here and yeah, it's, it's insane. Like people have to adapt obviously to their like, yeah. um, like position, et cetera. But like in Europe, it's just grown so well in that aspect. Like it's such a core group of dudes and it's all adults. There's no kids yeah. out here. But yeah. I see in the U S it's, it's, and in North America in general, like older people are gravitating towards Kendama and like from my mm -hmm. perspective and like, perception of it like whenever i see content from these events i see like a much older um like crowd than when i started and i saw like mm -hmm. mko videos and stuff like that there are a mm -hmm. lot of kids but now i see like maybe the the median age for kendama is going up mm -hmm. like for real <laughs> So, so two things there. One, first off, I loved what you said that we all speak different languages, but we all speak Kendama. Like yeah, that, that first off is so impactful. And especially through social media, it's like, I don't have to understand your language to be able to watch you do a trick and understand what no, you're doing. Yeah. And that's brilliant. Uh, mm -hmm. The second thing uh, that I, th I think is really interesting, and maybe, maybe you have insight on this. It's like, if we see the median age of Kendama growing, do you not see that as like a potential fear for the game in the future that we're going to lose intake of younger generations coming in and playing the same game we I, love? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, if if you look at like um, my community out here in, in Leiden, it's, there's a lot of 16, 17, 18 year olds, you know, yeah. it's sick. Like when I, and that's when I got into it and now I'm here because I yeah. got into it early enough that like I had this drive and I had time and I had mm -hmm. like still like my motor skills were still like, you know, honed where mm -hmm. I could like learn this sport at such a high rate that I was always stimulated, but mm -hmm. not too young that I would take anything for granted. Right. So I think like you had that, enough perspective. Absolutely. And I was like, this is so sick. This is special. Like I have to dedicate my time and effort into this. And like, I think reaching that demographic of like, late teens is so vital yeah and i think that they're just such big actors in the community i mean you can reach the younger kids like in japan you see it like those kids are like top of the world level wise and i think mm -hmm. it's so important to have those kids there to show us what's possible but and to give us a little bit of a fire under our butt to, to absolutely keep us yeah yeah like <laughs> for real like you you definitely need to have your game up 
and uh and and continue grinding but like i think it's so important for the just percent persistent growth of kendama to reach those people mm -hmm. who are that age because they're discovering their capacity of like getting involved in things and kendama is such a cool thing to have people getting involved into so if you have like 16 17 mm -hmm. 18 year olds getting involved like it, it won't ever like fade out you will always have like new fresh minds mm -hmm. creating so i, I yeah. think kendama is just it's just gonna like recycle itself you know yeah like kendama content is gonna live like through these younger minds and then like of course like we're still gonna be there i say we like i'm 22 i'm i don't feel old but no when I'm, yeah when i'm here i'm the, i'm one of the older ones like there's maybe oh, two other guys that are that are like older than me but like in general like from my small community i'm definitely the oldest oldest one yeah that's awesome that's so cool okay i want to yeah. ask one more question and then let's dive into some live q a here for a minute uh, absolutely so you you've ran a number of different events in europe mks yes. uh, sks and yeah. you ran you ran this secret event underground online oh within the pro community Ooh. that i heard about i i want to yeah that's for two that's questions some deep here stuff yeah two questions yeah, here. yeah one what inspired you to start running events and then two uh, talk to me about this secret underground pro event because I want to know the details here. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go for question number one first. Um, what inspired me to start events? Uh, just how much I enjoyed myself at events. Like and honestly, there there wasn't much more than that. It was like I know that what events do for the community. I know how events like impact new players and older players. I want to see the homies. Like it's like. These these mm -hmm. like factors are just what drives me to throw events. It's like we need a place to to be together, yeah. and if I can like facilitate that, then like hell yeah, like I'll do and, that. Like, yeah, were you sponsored at that time already when you started running events, or did you just start doing it no, out of your own? I, ju just... I, just, I definitely. Uh, I mean, like jams, maybe I was on unsponsored, and then once I got the sponsorship, you know, I, I had more confidence in my platform and right. And then I ran events, but like, obviously there's so many play in Europe. It's predominantly non-sponsored players. Almost. I want to say yeah. that, that run events, like you don't need to be sponsored to run events. Yeah. This is like the biggest illusion for me in Kendama. The most annoying thing is you have brands that are like literally throwing themselves at you being like, I want to help you with your, yes, event. yes. Like shout out Chad from soul Kendama shout out like all like Lotus quill. All these guys are just so ready to like give and just not ask for much in return. Like it's crazy. Like in yes. other like communities, if you want to be a sponsor, you need to pay a bunch of money. But if, if it's like, we're giving these brands such a great platform, we're not yes. asking them much money. We're not asking them to send out players. We're just being like, could you help out with some prizes and we'll throw your logo on there. We'll shout you out. Like, you're going to help out so much. We're, we'll give you exposure. We're not asking yeah. you any money. Like, it's like, we're so ready to collaborate with brands and brands are still at that point where they're like, this is so sick and can nominate yes. as many facets and platforms as it can. So it's like, like, yeah, let, let me go out to these communities, like go yeah. out to like, clubs collectives um crews like anyone will throw something in for kanama like that's what's so sick. kanama events run themselves in europe like that's that's the so biggest, cool sickest thing like everyone is so dialed that you can you can go to the event and it runs itself like everyone is so yeah. ready to just do things for you and you're so ready to do things for everyone that it just yeah. runs itself and it's so sick so like Yo. please everyone yes. out there throw events and jams when it's possible because it's not that hard and people are ready to do whatever they can for something that they love. Yeah. Like there's just never anyone who's like, no, I don't want to do this. No, I don't want to hold some cards. Like you can delegate. You can be like, be a judge for 30 <laughs> minutes. And people are like, yeah, I like, let's do it. Like, yeah, man. Fine with Dude, that. Huge shout out to the brands that came and supported mm -hmm. the event that Absolutely. I had hosted a couple of weeks ago uh, back in October. So we ran brew battle here like saw, a month yeah, ago. It, looks sick. It, it was so fun. And honestly, mm -hmm. like, it was really overwhelming how much support came in for that event when I didn't even advertise that I was looking for support because I didn't feel like confident enough to ask brands to support that. I just yeah. like said I was hosting an event and I got like 13 DMs from different companies being like, yo, we want to help support this. Can we send prizes? Can we send this? We literally had over 50 prizes donated for, for the event. It's, it's insane. We didn't even it's have so 50 cool. competitors. It was so yeah. cool. It's so and sick. I was just overwhelmed that even the people, so 
the the event space that we had a cool little rant story the event space that we had for the event was, ended up being donated to us at the end they were like they were gonna charge us and then they dropped their rate down to like a hundred bucks for the day for this dope studio event and then they're That's like so yo sick. we loved this event so much we're stoked on dama you can just have it for free for the day we are just hyped that you're here and that you're That's doing so this sick. i was like literally people love this game and i think yeah. that's so freaking cool it is it's it's honestly it's it's so amazing it's so awesome and you can see it on every single level and like yeah. it it just pushes you to to keep doing stuff because it's like there's there's so many receptors there's so many people ready to to like yeah. like take this love and just turn it into like grind time like just yeah. let's do stuff let's let's get involved and it's so it's honestly deceptively easy do not have yeah any like fear don't be self-conscious about it like it will just like organically yeah. just happen you can have your event and it will like and that's what's so sick you can you can like get a bunch of kanama players together and they will love it no matter what just because it's kanama like there's yeah. no other like factor just you do need. it you don't need all that shiny shit like you just have to have <laughs> people together playing kanama and they will like entertain yeah. themselves and be over the Just moon do to it with other people who play kanama like it's yes so easy so easy all right okay i i want to rant on this for forever but we can't um i want to hit some q and a's here but before we do talk to me about this underground kanama event okay. that you had ran okay. i don't I think have... many people know about this no it's it's let... so okay so okay so hold right, on, i'm gonna hold give on. you the quickest quickest rundown of this oh, wait, wait 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 let me let me tell you how i found out about this okay so, yeah all right tell me so the because vine. it was super super underground i mm -hmm. when when i had found out about it and the reason i found out about it was because i was actually looking at creating my own event online and i, mm -hmm. I was on challenge and i searched kendama oh, and i found i found this underground bracket with all of these pros in it it's insane like, that bracket <laughs> And I was like, what is going on here? There's an event happening that I haven't heard of that all of these pros are competing in. And then I, I asked some people and they're like, yo, Tio put this together. And I was like, what? Tio, tell me about it. Okay, so really quickly, it's actually Tio and Grove. Okay, Tio and Grove. Grove was heavily involved in it as well. So uh, first week of like pandemic o'clock, like I'm chilling here and I'm like, okay, this is, this is going to be a wow um, future of Kanama's like not in the balance because Kanama is eternal. Uh, it's just like the future of Kanama meetups and Kanama competition is sort of blurry right now. So I'm going to take it back to what I know. And it's a good old comp and some homies. Man, that's where it started. And then I hit up Grove and I was like, yo, Grove, I saw that you were trying to like start something on Zoom and I don't really know the platform. Like, can, can we talk about it? And like, and then like I called him and I was like, we talked for like an hour and then in the end, we were like, yo, we got to throw something. And then I was like, seems like there's a lot riding on something that you would throw online. So I'm not trying to like get so much attention on it. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to stream. And then I was like, oh, it'd be so sick if I just like catered this invitation and sent out to like the 30 craziest like Kanama homies slash yeah. players out there. <laughs> And then, like, it made 32 of us because Grove and I competed. And, um, yeah. I, that, it was a snack there, it was bracket. Just, it was so it was, cool. It's the, I'll, uh, yeah, like, I, I plan on, on going into it more, but when I have Grove with me. But, like, if, if you want to go find that bracket, it's on Challenge somewhere. And it's yeah. insane. Like, the, the yeah. turnout was sick. Who, and like, who won it? I can't remember. I mean, yeah, like, I'll give you, like, or, or you can keep it hush. Or, yeah, it's N NG. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You guys go figure it out. You guys yeah, go look go, it go look at Go look at that you... bracket online, and I'll come back at you with more information about this, like, in the future. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Because it was so... so s oh, no, look, he's in the chat. Yo, oh, get out of here. It definitely is a new <laughs> It is. All right, yeah, and look, he's giving information and everything. But yeah, it was, awesome. it was Nick. And he even got money for it. Yo, I, that money was to shut you up, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you were not supposed to talk about this. Yeah, who's, who's NG? Okay, let's hit up some Q&A here for a couple minutes. And then let's dive into your story of going pro with GT. Because yeah. I want to know that story. Let's go. Yeah. All right, so we got, a, we got a bunch of really good questions in here. A couple from the homies in the community. But let's kick one off here from Kelvin Wong. Sorry, Wong number asked, uh, what influences your clothing style? 
he's always admired your style and he's kind of wanted some parts of it in his own or he's oh, adapted so some sweet. of the parts in his own. Uh, he wants to hear where you get your inspiration from in that department. He's yeah. What a sweetheart. Um, I mean, yeah, just growing up in, uh, in Europe, watching skateboard videos, hang out with skaters, like just people just have watched their own out here. Yeah. And it was like a lot of that. And then buy local, like local skate brands. Like right now I'm repping, it's called Helas. The dude who who makes this brand like lived like a few minutes away from where I lived as a kid, and like like a hu very influential influential skater in the scene. And um, yeah, just yeah, look at the people that you love and and figure out what they're wearing. And then yeah, like when I was maybe like eighteen, nineteen, I was in Paris a lot, and that really influenced me, you know, I went there, like, a few mm. times for, like, Paris Fashion Week, and, and got to see some crazy stuff, mm. and uh, mm -hmm. that just, yeah, it's it's part of the stuff that influenced me, and then, yeah, in Europe, there's just a, a big, broader, like, mm -hmm. um, like, array of styles, and yeah I, yeah, I just wear, like, comfy stuff, and I stick to the, the brands I know and I love, and, like, just looking for a different, like, quality materials and just a ton of different stuff like I, I, yeah i really put a lot of work into that awesome okay and, oh i see mj's in the chat yeah we got lots of homies in here this morning okay let's hit a couple questions quickly we don't yeah, have let's a ton go. of time here uh yeah. bridgemaster underscore dama from canada is asking how do you create the trick lists for events what's your what's your process there i look at the tricks that i like uh usually i i tend to go for like shorter tricks like short impactful tricks mm. and then i try to like explore a range of tricks so like different different classes of tricks and then mm -hmm. yeah just stuff that looks cool and different combinations that you don't necessarily see in your joe game of ken or mm -hmm. stuff that you really see a lot in your joe game of ken yeah uh, maybe i'll ask a, a personal question here open versus freestyle what do you prefer oh freestyle for sure freestyle i, I love like open almost most pros prefer freestyle. You get to show off your own personal creativity. There's, there's a lot. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of pros that love freestyle. But yeah, I mean, it, it definitely goes both ways. I, I can, I think it's almost fifty fifty, dude. Like from the yeah. people I've talked to, like for real. And then there, there's like, yeah. But I, I love freestyle just because of the energy. I love open because of like that tension. But mm -hmm. freestyle, explosive energy, so much sicker for me personally. Okay, we got a good question here from D. Pats. Uh, he asked, what is your process for trick creation? So your personal process. Now, to preface, you've innovated a lot of tricks in the past couple years. And, and maybe if you want to give us a brief insight into your mind, and we can maybe hit on this a bit more as we talk about your edit. Yeah, a uh, brief insight. Yeah, I've, I've like the past year more for me has been more like active, like trick wise and like trick creativity. Uh, my yeah i mean like my um my process is that i'm always thinking about this like it's every day it's on my mind at all times i have my notebook and it's it can pop up at any moment like anything i see uh it's it's knowledge is power so if if mm. you're looking at ig and you're like looking at the tricks from edits like you just have to be the biggest knowledgeable like person on what tricks are being landed and then from there mm -hmm. you have to look at your trick selection and then then broaden it like I, I so many people say there's a lot of like pressure to learn so many different classes of tricks for me it was like i'm gonna focus on this one class of trick that i have and then it's going to like i'm gonna dwell deeper and deeper and deeper into mm -hmm. that spectrum and then at some point it'll broaden my mind to other things and that's what happened so mm -hmm. don't be afraid to really dig deep into one concept and then it'll branch out like for now i have a bunch of different concepts like you know pull outs and cush taps and there's like mm -hmm. so so like slow down taps there's so many of my concepts that mm -hmm. i have to like dwell into further before i even start to think yeah. about the next thing so cool. Okay. One, one more question, quick yes or no. And then let's dive into your pro journey with GT. Uh, Wyatt Bray wants to know Mario Kart fan. Yes or no? Dude. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Wyatt Bray, you know, you see the projector back here. You've been here. <laughs> You've played Mario Kart with me on this set projector. So yes, like big right Mario on. Kart fan. I, hey, I love a good old game of Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, let's talk about your story. We got about 20 minutes left here. So uh, let's talk okay. the GT Pro story. When did GT come into the picture in your life? So I had been playing for maybe two and a half years. I went to the Japan Expo in Paris, which is the biggest expo for Japanese culture outside of Japan. And um, so I went there and met up with Jake and the guys. I went there as their like assistant. Uh, I was... Uh, MCing on stage with Jake in French while he MCed in English, mm. and I I had never met any of them before. I, and like I knew I knew of Grain Fury. I had Grain Furies, and I obviously loved their team. But it was, it was never. I didn't. I never went there with the optic of like, oh, I'm I'm looking to grind and you know like pour myself out a little bit and like get sponsored. That was never the optic. It was more mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm looking to like make connections, meet new people, and like teach people kendama and so i went there mm -hmm. i went on stage and then at some point you know it wasn't particularly like talked about but like so i introduced stod and ben and they demoed kendama and then jake was like yo tio you demo kendama and i was like oh damn and so i took out my dama and it and like hit hit some stuff on stage like some really cool tricks and i was like super surprised and i was like whoa like there's like maybe 400 people out there watching and like hit a bunch of tricks and then uh, went back to the booth with them and like hung out, had so much fun for mm -hmm. five days. I was in Paris with them. And like, we, we like went out like partying and like just hung out mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like generally had like a really cool time. And like, it was obvious that I didn't have any like, you know, nefarious um, like intentions. I was just there. You to were hang plotting out and to get on the them. team. No, no, no. I was just, hanging out chilling with them i even asked okay this i haven't told really many people this i even asked rice if he could be like a plug for tara because i loved tara i was playing tara back oh then. that's and hilarious so I was like yo rice like could you put in a word for me maybe could you like show them european scene like what's going on down here if they ever need someone you know like and then he was like yeah i'll do that he ended up not doing that <laughs> at all and ended up sort of putting me on this short list of players that they were thinking about for Grain Fury. And then uh, a few months later, uh, it was August, late August. No, actually just um, maybe five weeks later, actually, not even a few months. Um, I, I had been mulling over this, this, these encounters and, and, and that trip. And I was like, okay, I, I texted Jake Weens. I was like, yo, Jake Weens. Um, I, I've been thinking about what we did and I love the energy that you brought to the stage with me. And like, I really enjoyed doing all that. And like, I've been looking to get sponsored for so long and, and, but this clicked like so differently. And I was much more avert about my like desire to be sponsored. And then mm -hmm. he just had a baby. So he didn't answer me for like three days. So for three days, I was like, damn, I came on too strong or <laughs> it's, like in the you, end, I, it's like when you text a girl, you're like, Hey, I really like you. <laughs> and, and, it was she's nuts. gone. Yeah, yeah, it was sort of that. But it was, and I had not, I'd, I'd hit my mark perfectly. There was no, yeah. like, there was no doubt in his mind. He was like, yeah, we want to work with you. And then two weeks later, I was announced on the team. So that Dude. was like that story. Right That's there. so cool. That is so cool. And so then yeah. that was, what, what year was that? You've been on the GT team now for? 2018. Yeah, so 2018. About... Yeah. Two it years. Was, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been on the team for two years um yeah it was like september 9th 2018 and yeah uh i was uh asked to be part of the pro team let's say 15 months later yeah a year crazy. and a half later so talk, yeah, talk to me a little so, bit about that story uh going pro that story so, is sick um, yeah i just like, watched me edit sick. this morning again all right awesome um i don't know i went to japan for catch and flow you know it was me the squad it was me weens kaito uh rod and very briefly aventus in our airbnb and then like we did our week in japan you know catch and flow i did i, I did really well at catch and flow mm -hmm. i i was like at the cutoff i had the same points i know as oh, fish. i heard <laughs> and it, and it was there was this cutoff but like i i was i was disappointed on the day of but then i got over it and like i i go to japan to chill and then like weens is you know like he's the guy like where he's managing me and like we work really well together. We like, he, he had me over to model the new winter line and like we were filming and like mm -hmm. hanging out, like just generally repping GT and like, we just bounce off of each other really well. Like I, there's no one in the Kanama world I work better with than Weens. And so we like had this time. And then as you saw in that video, 
the in the edits the, yeah. the the intro on on the last night he was there we were um, just you and rod and and jake in the and room. weens yeah it was maybe 4 a.m in that video which is not said and we were like that's crazy a, a few beers deep you know we had just been clubbing with with bonds and co so like in other words it was sketch like, yeah we late were like night. yeah late night sesh like i was like pretty like you know you, you've been partying for a week straight in japan you know i'm in bed like just like just chilling like a little bit faded and then like weens like pops out his camera and, and calls harold who's the homie in, in amsterdam and then i'm like i don't know what, what to think really but in my head i knew what was happening like there was no doubt about it i knew I, I I had like pictured the moment and and I knew what was happening and then he you know he popped a question I said yes put a ring on my finger and uh, <laughs> yeah that that's what happened and then uh, a few months later I flew to the the states and designed my own shape and waited for for six long months to announce it wow. to anyone it was supposed to be announced at an event but for six months i had to hide this from everyone and it was yeah like, grueling it was that's probably one of the painful. most underrated pain points for pros and like releasing new mods is that it yeah. takes like it takes months and months and months for your your pro announcement to come out you might get told like a year ahead of time and you have to sit there like it's all so quiet nuts. but it kept me sane you know, like I was thinking about it, like pandemic o'clock and I had this grind. I had this goal and I was like, shit, if I didn't have this, like what, what the hell would I be doing? And so I had this goal in mind and it was all I thought about for maybe six months. And then I just worked on it, worked on it. And then it bared its fruits because that edit is like so sick and it really represents everything that I wanted to see in that edit. And Jake mm -hmm. just like embodied my vision and then just like yeah, so it, it was so worth it, but it was it was grueling, and that's underrated or like it's yeah. understated. Like no yeah. one really like like Grove understands, Adrian understands. Oh. Like those guys oh, yeah. are in the same boat as me. You know, like we are pro bros, COVID pro bros. Yeah, Grove in particular. Like how long did he? I I mean, I we'll we'll get him on here one day, and I want to hear that story. But I think yeah, he waited okay, for I, a really long time to get his. No, he did. I I somehow I I'm not sure about this, but I may have have been one of the first non-sweets people to notice because I told him about me going yeah. pro the moment when we started organizing that um the underground invitational pro open yeah. so that day I told Grove I was like Grove this was up like I showed him the kanama and he was like oh damn and so he returned the favor and then like I freaked out I was like yeah oh, Grove that's this crazy sick. that's so cool yeah so you've been pro on GT for a little bit now. You were announced this yeah, year somehow. and there's yeah. been some cool stuff that's happened since then. You have released some incredible tricks. You continue to innovate in the scene, but mm -hmm. most recently there was a pretty cool event that happened in your life where you got to perform yeah. on a stage in front of a, a yeah, massive yeah, yeah. live audience. Uh, yeah, like talk to me about Francis million. got, yeah. Talk to me about Francis got talent. So Francis got talent is uh, okay. So basically it all started when Tim back in maybe May hit me up and he was like, yo, Tio, um, the casting. Oh, we're, we're cutting out here. We'll give him a quick second. Hey guys, we are going to take some time to do some more live Q and a at the end. So make sure you put your questions in and we will do our best to get around to them. We don't have a ton of time left, so we will do our best to hit as many as possible. Okay. We got Tio back. We're just waiting for the audio to connect again here. Thank you guys for tuning in this morning. Uh, your audio still can't hear you. What about now? All right. I got you now. I can hear you. Okay, sick. Um, yes. Oh. I, I still can't hear you right now. I don't know if you're... You might need to get some new headphones. I think it's earphones. Just or just unplug them. How yeah. about now? Yeah. We're all good? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. We got a little bit of feedback, little in, bit the of feedback in the background. A little bit? Oof. Let me yeah. see if I can get yeah. these earphones to work, bud. We'll, we'll give it a hot minute here. Guys, if we go... Such a bad echo. I can't hear you. Guys, we are experiencing some technical difficulties. This doesn't happen very often, so please bear with us. <laughs> I can't hear you. Uh, yeah, a lot of feedback. 
I'm getting rid of the earphones. Okay. So is okay. it better now? There. Still the feedback. I think we're good now. All right. Yeah, it this was just it weirded out. Like I think my internet cut out or something, and then it just cascaded into a bunch of problems. Uh, I'll be quick about it. It is what it is. Uh, so Tim got hit up. Uh, he hit me up. He was like, Tio, do you want to participate? I was like, hell yeah. And then uh, I went to Lyon in, in France and Tim and I trained. We created a choreography and just uh, two, we saw each other two times during the summer to, to do this and finalize it. We did not have much training time, by the way. But I mean, when you're playing Konami, you're sort of training. And uh, mm -hmm. so he then um, traveled to Paris and auditioned for the show and it went swimmingly like the day of we were like over the moon with the result. Like we went there and met a bunch of really sick people. Like uh, we experienced like a television set and like network TV, which is like super weird and like a new experience for both of us. Um, we performed our run and we did it like almost flawlessly, like first try, which was like so insane for us. And then we had this long discussion with the judges, which was like about 10, 15 minutes where we talked well, over why we're there. Like they were like, we can see that you're not performers, you're athletes and you came to represent your, your, your sport and you did it really well. Like we had such a positive like um, interaction with the judges. Like one of the judges said, if you're a millionaire in three years, like we're not going to be surprised. Like it's like, it was at that point, like we were like, mm -hmm. wow, these people really understood what Kanama is and could be, and they were like, it's just not for us. You know, it's not for the big stage. Hmm. And we were like, we, we expected this this response, but we were just so happy with our accomplishment. And we hmm. left feeling victorious. And like, we were like, okay, mm -hmm. this was this was sick. And then on the day of the broadcast, um, we, we, we expected it to be cut down because that's how they do. And these network shows are very weird and competitive. So it was like, mm -hmm. they cut us down to maybe a 45 second segment that was difficult to interpret if you didn't know all the information I just told you. Mm, so it was mm -hmm. like, it looked pretty negative, but in the end it was not. And it did Kanama France, a world of good. And it was a big accomplishment yeah. for us. And we were just, we, we were just really happy with how it went down. So no, no, like, um, you know, like no negative thoughts towards the, you know, the network mm -hmm. or anything, we were just so happy we got to do this. And so, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the story of how Tim and I went on French television. That's so cool. And yeah. I mean, what a privilege and an honor and a great way to bring Kendama to more people in the world. 2.5 million people. That's crazy. Yeah, give or take. And they didn't see Kendama in its, uh, like, they did, we, we didn't want to go on and not represent Kendama, like, um, yeah. you know, faithfully. We represent them as we are, like, you know, like we went dressed as we would. We went like we we played Kanama as we would. We spiked every trick. We 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 represented it the way we we see Kanama, and we wanted right. people to see Kanama. We didn't want to see people to see Kanama as a gimmick, as just another like artistic like discipline. No, it's a yeah. sport. Like, if one day it gets onto the Olympics, I would be the last one surprised. It's like that's that's where we see Kanama, so yeah. we wanted to represent it exactly as we In see that it. Way. We didn't want to. We didn't want to have any gimmicks. We okay, didn't. yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's sweet. I, and I mean, that that probably is hard to do because there is a way that I think you could perform Kendama to to win over the favor of judges. So and, easily. And, you don't and, have to do anything. Like, no, you, you have could to have do... a soft story. You have to, like... <laughs> you have yeah. to, you know, you, you, could, you could so easily, like, quote-unquote, brain these shows where you, Did... like... It wouldn't be difficult. Like Tim and I thought about it. We were like, do we want to do this? Like with that in mind, we were like, no, we were, we're like, we're Kanama professionals. We're, we, we're part of the street culture. We're not part of this mm. like uh, circus culture. We're going to represent Kanama as a street like object. And we're not going to sell ourselves out. And so that's mm -hmm. what we did. And we were like, whatever the result may be, at least we know we did this mm -hmm. faithfully to our vision of Kanama. And that was the most important part. Yeah, that that's awesome. Maybe I'll ask one question here and then we'll we'll jump yeah. into some live Q&A. And first, first off, let me say thank you for being on here. This is awesome. This was uh, has been so fun. Anytime, man. It is so fun. I love communicating with the community and I think like the podcast like platform is its most faithful like 
uh, communicating tool because it's it's so sick. Like being on the nerds was sick. Like this yes. is sick. Like go I think, listen to the nerds episode. It's so good. I I really enjoyed that one. I was it was also like narco fever. So I was like <laughs> I, I I seemed yeah. sedated in that episode. <laughs> like re listened to it once and I was like oh my god I was I I seem like asleep and I yeah. was half asleep. So I'm definitely you know I know I know MJ's in here and Rod is in yeah. here and it's been talked about. But if you see me on the nerds in the future. Definitely not a surprise. Oh, yeah. It's We're not that. done hearing stories from, from T.O. Okay. Um, no, one never, question, man. One question I do want to ask about the, the Francis Scott talent and about that same topic that you were talking about. Do you think there is a place in the, the community of Kendama to treat it more like a performance to help grow the game? Or do you see that as something as a negative? Uh, no, no. I definitely see, like, I, Kendama, like, when, when you say performance, no, I, I love to see Zuma Donke. I love to see, like, Kanama players at juggling conventions, et cetera. I think Kanama can grow in every single direction. And I think you just have to be a purveyor of your Kanama vision mm. and make it grow in that direction. Like the most important thing you can do is be honest to your Kanama vision and help it grow in that direction. Cause you can be certain that there's other people who are growing Kanama in, the, in their vision. So mm -hmm. like if you want to grow Kanama as a, per, a, a performance tool or a tool to get money busking off the streets, do it. Cause that's you. Yeah. But if, if, if you want to grow Kanama as like a, a cultural, like phenomenon and item, that's like, that's also you. If you want to grow it as a sport and, and have it be like sort of um, in an, through an association like the JKA, you do that as well. Cause like Kanama needs to grow on every platform and on every cultural like plane. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's so yeah. important for you to, to grow Kanama the way you do. If you want to be a grinder, be a grinder. If you want to be like, a performer be a performer but like just yeah. do it the way that you see fit yeah and, and that's the beauty of kendama right is it's this tool mm -hmm. for unlimited potential and you can do with it as you want to do with it and there's so much creativity that can go into it and i think Absolutely. i think i think you're hitting so, that right it's a cultural piece it's a it's a thing that we get to bring into our lives and change who we are and what we do and what we think about the world yeah it is absolutely it's a, yeah cultural piece subculture it's it's all of that and more and and yeah just just grow kanam the way you see fit and and you'll find your results to be like more than expected like it's so crazy how people receive receive this toy it's it's so sick all right tio now i don't do this very often uh, i've mm -hmm. i've never gone over my hour limit but we have some incredible questions in the chat here would you be willing to stick on for an extra five ten minutes and hit through a few of these uh, insta like, All right, let's do it. Let's jump through some live Q&A. Guys in the chat, this is a very special episode where we are going longer than our normal time limit. This isn't a regular yeah. occurrence, but we are doing No, no, it. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a chatty dude if you get me going and, and you're <laughs> pressing on my buttons. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's dive into some good questions here. First off, we got a question here from Ven. I, <laughs> I can't oh, pronounce wait, wait, the rest I'll, of it. It's Tone. He's a Dutch homie. Okay, awesome. Uh, do you think Kendama is going through the same things as skateboarding in the beginning? Absolutely. And I think I've touched on all of that. I think Kendama is at that point. Like, it's, it's skateboarding in the 90s, but in a modern setting, because now we have social media, etc. So for me, that's, that's where Kendama is right now. It's, it's we're in the, the birthing place of Kendama. So if you're getting involved in Kendama right now, you're writing like the beginning of Kendama history. Mm. Like, it's that that's that's how it is do you see us as in the second wave of kendama or the first wave because i think like when i look back at kendama i see it as we're in the yeah. second wave because there was yeah, the first I, wave i see that too absolutely yeah i i think it's 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 important to to put that distinction and i think there's a lot of positive outlook to to you looking at it as the second wave because you're building on what was done before but mm -hmm. then again there's so much beyond you and you're yeah. setting up a third wave if you want but yeah, do whatever you way you look at that do you think I there's going to be a reset, like a third wave, like where we see a bit of a dip and then another rise in the future? It's so difficult to say. I don't really. No, you, you just I, see it as a coast straight up now. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it like that right now. Like, I think the, 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 the actors in the scene are so, um, so prolific and so just wonderful what they do that they're not going to let it dip, <laughs> like, for real. I see it as like, it's going to be this constant growth, like, for 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 the foreseeable future yeah that's awesome and tom.com actually instagram removed the hour time limit so we can go over if we if we ever do oh. want to so we can this time okay uh <laughs> shucky dern asked what's your relationship Ooh, with kendama france and native kendama 
I love that question. Um, we're like, if, if, if like a brand could be my best homie, it would be Kanama France and Natif Kanama. Like I'm like, I, I love those guys and I want to see them make it. And I have a big connection to France personally. And, and they are, they help me like spread Kanama love in France. And I help them like grow their image elsewhere. Like, mm. you know, like vicariously, like I grew it for them maybe in the U S a little bit and, and help them like achieve their potential. And I love Tim and Tim is like the big boss at Kanama France in some mm -hmm. aspects with Thierry and Alexis. And, and like, I see them as like, my foothold in France and as the homies, I do a lot mm. for them. Like if you, if you're reading a Kanama France post and most of them have an English translation, I'm the one translating it for oh. them, for example. Look at you go. Just one like, for the I, community. Yeah. Like I, I, I just love to see them like, yeah. you know, fulfill and, their, their potential and they're sick dudes. So. And they're like, they're two humble co companies that you don't hear that much about, they're so but they're doing sick. such great work. Their edit, they are, uh, the native edit was amazing. Like okay, if you guys yeah. haven't seen it, go watch that right after I'm, this, I'm watch it right away. Segment. Uh, Natif Kendama, like honestly, most like um, prolific at making sick edits, like their videographer, shout out, uh, Alex, and he is one of the most like talented videographers in Kanama to date, mm -hmm. like of all time. The dude is like on one. So It'll all drop his at, drop his at. Uh, Alex GT Photo Thirty Eight. Alex okay. G Photo Thirty Eight. Yeah, yeah. Go follow him. Yeah, I'll, I'll put him up on my story. He is such a talented videographer. He used to shoot skiing and stuff. Like just okay, all of Kanama France's like. Um, content is fantastic and that's thanks to him and obviously tim and all those dudes but like kanama france has been on one so awesome okay we got a question here from carter justice he says tio is a big advocate for penguin versus top grip he would love to hear you explain it more uh, uh you seem to be the guy to be able to shed light on the difference because carter has a hard time telling the difference yeah, oh, I, I think Carter doesn't. He's such a good Kanama player. There's no way he has a hard time. But I, I'm, I would, I would word differently. I'm not about like top grid, top grid versus Penguin. I'm more about like differentiating them. I think they're what, both. What is the difference? I've never heard of top grid. Okay, so I think they're both tricks, and like, it's more of an angular like um, difference. And so I think they're both tricks in their own merit, and they're both like good tricks, and. But I, I think there's a difference. And, and all you have to do is go look up Super Nog and Penguin, and then you'll see, like, Penguin tricks. So top grip for me is this position here. So this is mostly just for... And this for is top Tom grip. Yeah, for Tama grip. Because on Ken grip, it's it's harder to do top grip. It's, like, the top, the, the Penguin is where it's, it's more difficult. So Tama grip, essentially, this is top grip. On Penguin and on top grip it's more open yeah that's penguin what you're showing me every time you move your video or you move the video like lags a little bit you're lagging out a little bit but that's okay i can still see oh. you okay we're good we're good okay let's hit up a couple more questions here if we get shut down by instagram uh let's hit up as many as we can okay uh we got a question there's been this I uh, asked a couple times, will you be in Battle at the Border this year? Are you going to compete online? Uh, yeah, I'm losing you a little bit, but it's it's lagging. Oh, can you, can you read? Bit. Hopefully I'm, you can read yeah. the question. Yeah, I can read the question. Will you be at Battle? But I mean, Battle at the Border is online, so for mm -hmm. sure I'll be there. Like, no doubt. Like, I'll I'll try to see and compete and hang out with the homies and, yeah, be involved in this again, another online event. Like, I mean, this is the way that we're interacting. And so I'm going to be an actor as, as much as I can and participate and enjoy it with you guys as much as I can. So. Awesome. Uh, Jour Stoizen asked, when you, is the vid? Jura. I need to work on my, my, my. No, no, it's okay. It's all Dutch names. It's all <laughs> Dutch homies. It's complicated. All right. When, when is the vid where, where you were explaining your mod coming? It's uh, very soon. 
Yeah, very soon. I have a personal mid vid made and Jake has a video that's being made. And so, yeah, like very soon. So expect that coming up. Awesome. And congratulations, first off, on your pro mod. It is beautiful. It's really stunning. Thank I neglected so to pick one up, but I do need to get one at some point. I am a big fan of it. I love the simplicity. I know. Uh, yeah. I'm so stoked to hear you say that. Like, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's honestly, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Like, it's, I'm really stoked on it. Like, to this day, like, it's so, so sick. So, yeah, I hope you get one and I hope you get to, to like, I don't know if you've tried one yet, but yeah. Uh, Thanks so much. I, I think I have tried one or I'm trying to remember. I think I did. I've tried the Adrian Esteban, but I don't know if mm. I've tried yours. I think I might have. But I regardless, I got I to gotta try it again is all yeah. I'm going to say. Okay, maybe this will be one of the last questions we'll ask. I think this is a really mm -hmm. great concluding question from James underscore Kandama underscore. If you were mm -hmm. to tell your younger self that you'd be on Francis Got Talent playing a Japanese toy, how would you react? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd react in disbelief. Like I explained at the beginning of this episode, the extent of my ignorance regarding Kandama when I was like 18. So you can imagine the extent of my ignorance when I was younger. So yeah, I'd be super surprised and impressed wow. maybe you know like it's it's definitely possible like uh, yeah and i'd be stoked why not like i'm stoked on it now so yeah i, I like to think i was i was a similar minded person back then when it came to like accomplishments so yeah i'd be i'd be happy all right last question that i want to ask and then we'll wrap up this episode uh tio uh if you could predict what the next year of Kendama would look like. What do you see as some of the next steps in the Kendama community's journey? I I'm I, I'm gonna see like we're yeah we're we're definitely gonna see more of the same on like a progressively bigger scale. We're gonna see like better like online events. We're gonna see uh, hopefully more edits. We're gonna see like just the same stuff that we've been seeing on a higher intensity and then like small explosions of pin like of of exposure same that we've had like france has talent you know like uh soul collabing with round two like small explosions of just mm -hmm. exposure that's that's what we're going to keep seeing so for me on a personal level i'm going to keep grinding the way i have been and and keep seeing different results and more positive things coming up and yeah I'm, I'm, we're going to see more collabs we're going to see more stuff so like hang tight and stay tuned because Kanama is not going anywhere and Kanama progress is definitely on the rise. Like still just going to go down and in more places with more people and more ages, blah, 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 blah. Just more of everything, mm -hmm. more of everything. Right on. Okay. And okay. I have one more question. This one's more selfish than anything. Are you going to run oh, another man. underground online competition and how do I get my name in it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so far, maybe, maybe not. Because like the 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 not underground online Kanama competitions are so are flourishing and they're oh yeah they're they're fantastic you know like they're so good um, but yeah if 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 there's there if there was ever an under underground event then uh, I'd probably think of like instoring more like <laughs> uh, like facets to it so may, yeah for sure you'd, you'd be on that list but I'll, uh, I'll send you my details. Yeah, m many five-minute interviews of, like, players before going up or something like that. That'd be sick. Like, I want to see that more of that. Like, I want to see that, actually. That's what I do want to see as an addition to online events in the near future is more player interviews uh, during the competition. So, like, if you ever watch, like, eSports in between matches, yeah. they, like, pull yeah. the guy up and they talk to him. It's like, okay, talk me through what was going through your head during that match. I'd love to do that. Like, yeah, that would be so like fun. that would be so sick. And you could, like, integrate, like, cool cool questions and it can definitely like help the player maybe like uh focalize like oh yeah. that's what i did like really and just give insight to the community something. yeah i think that's that's something that's really cool and pro players are always ready to like to like sh share knowledge and partake in like the the events and stuff so like for sure like i'd, I'd have you on for that bud like i think you're right on well, well we'll make it happen well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Tio, thank you so much for joining this review. This has been a really Anytime. special one for me. Such it is a always, pleasure. It is so fun. I love it every week. Uh, next week, we got a pretty pretty cool guest jumping on here. I've leaked it a little bit. We got Mr. Boogie T joining the preview next week. That's, that's and we are going to be 
Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm actually so excited. We are going to be talking all about this new wave of kendama as a cultural icon and, and how it's growing into different areas through the Sweets Mob and through EDM and through Subtronics and these sorts of categories. So we're going to be chatting with Boogie T next week, mm -hmm. chatting about his kendama journey and working with Sweets. So Tio, thank you so much for joining on. We'll, we'll have to get you back on because there's always going to be stories surrounding you because yes. you are continually pushing this game that we love and I am so thankful that you are part of this community. So Anytime, thank you. Man. Thank you so much for all the love and right back at you. And yeah, hit me up anytime. Any of you guys, if, if you ever have a question, I'm always ready to answer. And yeah, like I'll be back on this show whenever you want. And you can count me in for the Boogie T episode. I'll be listening closely. Right on. Like, I'm sick. Well, you guys can catch this episode again live. If you tuned in late, it'll be on IGTV and I will get it uploaded onto podcasting platforms here today. So if you want to take a listen again or share it, that always goes to help the podcast grow and to push Kendama to more people. The more people that go like, follow, and subscribe on the different podcasting platforms, the more that this gets shared on search engines and more people mm -hmm. can find Kendama. So thank you guys, and we will see you next week. See you, T.O. See you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.